all of you who are coming back to visit us. Here's the, here's the bit that I want to tell all of you who don't know more about the Arts Cafe Mystic. We're a nonprofit organization. We were founded 27 years ago by Melanie Greenhouse, who's right in back near our featured reader, a reader Rhonda Ward. And, uh, and Christy Williams, who, who really would have been here and canceled at a very, very last minute. They're celebrating a big, big occasion in Christy's family. For those of you who are friendly, uh, Kate turned 70, and Tess, their daughter, turned 30. So they're having a giant 100th birthday party for everybody because they can. And so, um, so Christy isn't here to thank. But Melanie and Christy had a vision 27 years ago. We, we normally do three shows in the spring, three in the fall. We were smart to wait this year. We intend to do all of our events outside unless we have inclement weather and we'll go right back inside to use the main gallery. Many, many thanks to our friends at the Mystic Museum of Art, to my board of directors, um, John Sutherland, the president. Uh, I've got Julia Simpson, Dorothea Moore, Liz Raisbeck, Wendy Halsey. I think you are the five that are here. The board does everything. Um, they really do. It's amazing. Um, somebody scrubbed these tablecloths and somebody picked them up and brought them and they move the chairs and they'll stack them up when you go. So I'm very, very blessed to work for an amazing group of people. Um, if you, let's see, if you need to use the restroom, it's the blue door right here. Um, masks are suggested going in and out of the building. Of course, they are at your own discretion now. Um, and I think that's about it. I'm going to begin by uh, introducing our guests of honor, our Poets Laureate, and we'll hear... Um, from each of them. Um, as I mentioned in the publicity, but a lot of you probably didn't see it, our event today, you'll see on the back of your programs, we have a wonderful friend to our community who's also a gifted poet. Margaret Gibson is the Connecticut Poet Laureate. And she got to work as Poet Laureate and has done so much in her year and a half as, as the Laureate already. But she, she got a grant to um, initiate green poetry events around the state. And she also created a wonderful anthology. And we will be honoring uh, uh, Margaret and the poets from the anthology, um, many of whom are our audience members next month when we gather. Um, so Margaret also subsidized our event today with a very generous grant. So the student scholarships today really, really come with some great help from Margaret and also from many of you here in the audience who continue to make your donations every year and they make such a difference to us. So I'm going to introduce your Poets Laureate um, in the order they appear in your programs, which is alphabetically by high school. So with no further ado, bring your poems on to us. Hi, my name is Madeline Porky and I am here representing Montville High School. The first poem I will be reading today is called Front Lawn. I speak for the weeds, for the unlucky clovers my brother mows down twice a week, trying to make our yard look like green cardstock, paper I will never use for love letters or doodles or notes to pass in class. I speak for the weeds, for the yellow dandelions in the grass that my brother tells me are too ugly to fold into a notebook impressed for later, to tape to my wall or in a birthday card. I speak for the weeds, for the tiny buds which trickle down like rain and won't grow much larger, for they will forever be too small for bouquets and too frail for crowns. I speak for all the tiny specks of nature whose only homes are in unkept yards and the bag on my brother's lawnmower. And the second poem I will be reciting is called 2021. An early sunset, rainbows dance upon the floor and fly from the CDs hanging on my curtain rods. I look out my window to see the final goodbye of the winter sun. Last storm of the year, mid-morning clouds hang overhead. I watch as the ice drips off earth's skeletons and I wonder, where has the time gone? 
The final goodbye of the winter snow. I look out my window and the skeletons turn to clouds, turn to cotton, turn to life. And I wonder, where has the time gone? The final goodbye of the winter chill. Sleepless dreams and moon-filled night skies. Cold mornings, warm afternoons. Too much rest, but never enough. I look at the calendar and somehow the date has not changed from this morning and I am disappointed. Days are years and years are just the number I throw past the hash marks knowing that the two, zero, two, one won't save me even when it's gone. And my third and final poem is titled Keeping Up with the Joneses. Fast life in fast cars, nukes bombs in plastic jars, brand deals, big steals, ice caps in vegan meals. Save the bees, milk and cheese, wars are raging overseas. Self-help atop ourselves, saving skin to save ourselves. Gasoline and Tesla stocks, just new flocks speeding up the clocks. No care, all reward, the big issues we've all ignored. Losing sight just for fun, I sit and think, what have we done? <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm Maddie, and the first poem I'm reading is called You've Got a Friend in Me, and it's about the relationship between animals and humans. You've got a friend in me. The pea-colored leaves of spring pop like bunnies from their rest, as conniving squirrels sit within tree branches, scheming to steal the flesh of my orange peel that lays forgotten beside me. I toss it towards them, the crafty, cute creatures, and one steps forward in bewilderment. Confused but delighted, the leader of the squirrels, whom I have named Dave, bounds forward, snatches the skin, and treks back with a triumphant pep in his tiny steps. Though we just met, I make believe that he is a single father of two, struggling to provide for his family as the hunter-gatherer. I do this so that I might smile to myself with the thought that I put food on the table and his life may be easier. It's a silly thought, I know. But when spring erupts and life awakens from its sleep, and the force of nature pours oil on its rusting clocks, frozen with snow, and the fairy dust from ancient gardens nudges sleeping squirrels from their rest. I try to do my best, as a human, as a friend, to let my sweet fellow creatures know that I am here for them to greet, and, if needed, to help them make ends meet. The second poem I am reading is actually kind of unique because we had a really deep conversation today about the environment and a common theme that kept occurring was our frustration with our ancestors failing to address climate change and alleviate the problems that now we as a generation have to face today. How could you let this happen? The earth, our earth, my earth. It has always been, but how long will it continue to be? We ravage her fields impale her breathing soil, and choke out all life from her roots. And yet when we have enough, it is not enough. So we move to her rainforest, murder her trees, strangle out her flowers, and fill them with weeds. Then we march to her animals and twist their squealing limbs into one meter pens, carve out their beating hearts, and push, no, slaughter them. Meanwhile, children are dying, people are crying, and so how am I supposed to be okay as the world around me decays every day? Is this now my responsibility that you left me with? That you were supposed to fix? Now I have to live in a world where blue skies are phenomenons only read in textbooks, where clean oceans are only made in Disney films, and where green life is but the single patch of withered grass dying next to a pumping smog machine. No, I don't want this. Not now, and not for those after me. But this is my reality. How could you let this happen? Thank you. Hello. This first poem is called Hiking. I went hiking once with my dog. 
He danced in the dappled light and splashed through the creek. He pulled me up a hill to admire the view and looked more at home in the woods than the bark on the trees. He showed me the tiny hidden anthills and taught me to hear the bird calls. He ran through the underbrush, pausing every so often to look back, eyes glinting, to make sure I followed. And when we got helplessly lost, he found the way back. His ears perked up like some ancient, wild instinct was calling him home. Thank you. This poem is called Mom Says. Um, my mom was recently diagnosed and is battling cancer, so this poem is for her. Mom says, so who's going to be at this party? What she means is, if you're anything like me when I was your age, this will not end well. What she means is, do I need to worry? What she means is, please be safe. So when I'm sitting on the curb with my lipstick smeared and tears running down my face, she picks up on the first ring. The car filled with heavy silence, she drives all the way back home. And when she pulls into the driveway and turns off the engine, we sit together in the dark, like she knows everything without ever having to ask. Mom says, what flavor of ice cream are we eating tonight? What she means is, which boy made you cry and do I need to beat him up? What she means is, life is tough, but so are you, darling. What she means is, you don't need his weak love. So when we kneel in the garden together planting the marigolds, she teaches me the divine beauty of the grapevine, the way it tri twists and thrives and warns me about the danger of pretty weeds. She lets the earthworms crawl across her fist and shows me how to love all things. Mom says, how was school? What she means is, do you remember when you held my hand when I walked you to kindergarten? I do. What she means is, why do you look so tired? What she means is, tell me what you've learned. So when I'm on stage in my cap and gown, holding my diploma, the key to the rest of my life, hers is the first face I look for. She stands, grinning and clapping, eyes gleaming like she doesn't even need the camera because our memory of this moment is all we'll ever need. Mom says, take a coat. What she means is, I don't care if you think your outfit looks better without one, take a coat. What she means is, I don't want to watch you shiver. What she means is, I love you. So when we're standing on the sidewalk waiting for the stoplight and I shiver, coatless in the rain, she unzips her jacket and lets me back up into her. My spine against her breastbone, my head against her chest, she pulls the coat around us like she wants to swallow me whole, like she's trying to pull me back inside her, like she knows she's the only one who can ever keep me warm. Thank you so much. Hi. Um, my first poem is called Four Seasons, and it's a playful take on how seasons interact with each other. Oh, Summer, you make me smile much. Oh, Summer, I adore your warmth. For an autumn, I yearn your touch. For in winter, the frozen blanket covering the earth can never fabricate, oh, Summer's kindness. When dear spring inherits the rains from winter's cold grasp, dear spring blossoms new birth. Dear spring restarts life, new beginnings, melting winter's frigid blues. But I'll never beam as much as I do when I feel, oh, Summer's touch. Um, my second poem is called For I Know, and it's about how I believe that you can be anything you want after you pass on. Eventually, inevitably, certainly. On a day unknown, at a place unknown, for a reason unknown, I will close my eyes for a final time. I do not fear the future, for I know that I will become everything I love, the blurred trees you pass on the drive home, the dampness on your driveway after a storm, the sunlight that provokes you to squint your eyes, the moon and stars that illuminate night skies. I do not fear the future, for I know that when Mother Nature calls, the only thing left to do is go. Okay, that's better. Okay, so my first poem that I will be reading is called Mother's Grove. Reborn, emerging from soil, sunshine hits my face. It's a new day for hope to stretch endlessly until the sun goes to sleep, hoping to start again a new day. I'm in Mother's Grove, filled with endless blues, greens, every single color. 
All around me lies brothers and sisters, the fruits of mother's labor. We bask in sunlight in this little grove, bearing our souls to the sky, asking for another day, please. The little coral bells call from the garden, lest they want to wither. Daffodils stare into ponds with jumping frogs, ripples from welcoming water saying hi. And blooming cherry blossoms alongside it greet me. Its children twirl and chase one another from its branches, grazing my cheeks with little pink kisses. This gated grove provides solace, harmony, peace. But in the distance, dissonance lingers. Mother's howling, mother's weeping, everything is rising and everything is collapsing. Held in by white picket fences, we cannot go, keeping us in our gated grove. All is heat, no more peace in the land of blues, greens, and now browns. Silence is coming. Suffocating cold is the clear gray air condemning the souls of those who bear them to skies not so sunny. Wilted woes and mirrors gone in a place with no more buzz. Silence arrives. It deafens. In silence, mother still cries. Mother still wails. And her silence is all I hear. So back into the earth, into soiled land I go, hoping for another day in the sun in my gated grove. Uh, the second poem that I have is called King Princess, and it's kind of an ode to my child. <laughs> childhood. Not a child. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> to my childhood. <laughs> okay. Okay. King Princess. In my kingdom, a sheer black sheath envelops the patchy mounds of grass where I used to run and play. Big, bodacious gray boulders scattered across the otherwise barren plain. <laughs> Those boulders, mountains, which I trekked on for what seemed like weeks, and when I finally reached the, to the top, I felt triumphant, and the mountains transformed into castles. I claimed them under my name with my arms high and mighty and the wind blowing strong. The tiny particles of air from the wind would lift each strand of hair to make them fly and flow like ripples in a lake. The little swirls of black filled the space around my head to form my crown and I became King Princess. The lawless kingdom was ruled by no other but myself. There was no one there to stop me. There was no one there to bring me down. All of the creepy crawlies bent to the will of the tiny giant I was and became my subjects. I reigned over the rocks, the dirt, the grass, the sunshine, the whistling birds, the buzzing bees, and simply everything I could see. I was king princess of everything in my visual plane, and there was peace, happiness, laughter, and serenity within my kingdom. But then the sun came down. The sky turned into the prettiest shades of pink, yellow, and red. Then darkness crept up and mingled with the pretty colors, and I knew my reign was ending quick. I did as much as I could before it was over. I ran, I screamed, I met my subjects. I created homes, meals, playscapes, schools, and educated my young subjects. I taught them the world. Then the sun went to sleep, and I, King Princess, was overpowered by the drowsies and, re and relieved my crown until the morrow. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. What a great, great, great treat for all of us. Hard to believe most of these girls said they were nervous earlier. What a beautiful job you did. Thank you so much. I get to introduce you to our musician now. Her name is Serena. She came all the way from Washington, D.C. to sing for you. I've had the privilege of knowing Serena since she was a little girl. Her grandmother's one of my greatest friends, and I haven't seen her in many months. She's just back from Charleston, South Carolina, along with her co-driver. They, 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 Dara and Melissa drove up from South Carolina to be with us today. And Serena's dad just came in from Pennsylvania. So welcome, Fletcher. It's so good to have you here. Um, Serena's bio kind of speaks for itself. Um, the words on paper are, are terrific words on paper. I apologize to you for the typo. I, um, it's, it's several terrible fragments that I cut and paste to try to get it to fix 
while I was distracted. If you weren't my buddy, I'd feel even worse. But you know, it's par for the course. I've heard uh, Serena sing for many, many years now, and um, her gift will speak for itself to all of you. She's in the process of, of signing a, a major contract with a major songwriting um, uh, publisher through one of the major music companies of the world. Um, one of the things about Serena that you might not gather because she's so confident up here, she's so confident as a performer, but she's so humble about her gifts. Um, when I visit her, when she's visiting her grandmother on Block Island, you really have to ask her to pull the guitar out. Even though she's been working for days, writing new songs and record setting time, she, she doesn't, uh, she wouldn't even let on. And her biography does indicate that she had the option to really pursue music um, at school, but figured she would spend the rest of her life making music. So she, she buckled down and got herself quite a degree in, in cognitive psychology and, and neuroscience. Um, so I love her, and I'm so glad she's here to sing for you. Please welcome my friend, Serena. Um, I'm so happy to be here tonight. Um, the poetry has been absolutely beautiful. I love listening to student poets as a poet turned songwriter myself, um, although I still like to think of myself as a poet first. Uh, so this show holds a special place in my heart. Um, and actually, Lisa said it. Um, I don't know where she went. Oh, there she is. Hi, Lisa. Um, I've known her my whole life. And when I was just starting to write poetry, when I was maybe seven or eight years old, uh, she sent me some of her poetry books with a note to keep writing and keep working on my craft. And I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. Um, so I did. I did keep writing. One, because I loved it. But in the back of my head, I'm thinking, this is cool. Poetry is cool. And Lisa Starr thinks you're cool, so you should keep writing. Um, and here I am. So thank you, Lisa, for your hand in my creative journey. Um, yeah, so I've got a couple songs for you tonight. This first one is called Blue. I'm caught up over you. It's just something I do. I replay it in my head and rework the way it ends. When you beckon me near, I hide out of fear. But if you look into my eyes, you'll recognize the blue every time. Cause the blue for you. Mm, mm, they long for you. Mm, mm, you walk deep tracks in my heart like some golden pilgrimage. And when you captured that part, you did it so I barely noticed. And now I'm blue for you. Mm, mm, oh, I long for you. Mm, mm, and I don't know how I loved you at the wrong time. No, I don't know, don't know how I loved you at the wrong When you carved out all my words And you painted them in with silver And you told me you could only hold me Till maybe next November It's too blue for you Oh, oh, oh It's too long for you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how I loved you at the wrong time I don't know how I loved you at the wrong Oh, I don't know how I loved you at all Thank you. Thank you. Um, this next one is called Get It Right, and I wrote it right before the pandemic. Another 
this song won't hurt Another phrase is not gonna make this work I don't know what it is you do That paints me in this kind of blue Another song won't hurt But I never understand I fit into the palm of your hand I answer your begging call Oh, I, I I talk too much I, I get caught up I read between the lines I, I wish I had the words to say But I just wanna get it right Just wanna get it right just wanna get it Another song won't hurt But you take up too much space So darling, it's hard to say How I find my way back to you But when the roads are flooded over and there's mountains on your shoulders When the world is at your back I will always take the weight Oh, oh I, I I talk too much I, I get caught up I read between the lines I wish I had the words to say But I just wanna get it right just wanna get it right Just wanna get it Thank you um, Oh, that's not it There she is um, This next one is a little change of pace This one's called Are You With Me? This feeling, I get it all the time I think about you in the back of my mind And then I, all of a sudden I think you know what I'm talking about What I'm talking about Or oh, I think I'm thinking the same thoughts as you And you're thinking about me all the way From wherever you are And you're in her presence But you're so far Cause you're with me And baby, I can feel yeah, closer, closer they are You're with her when you're with her Yeah, so far when you miss me, baby Ooh, ooh, are you with me, baby? Ooh, ooh, oh, it's a feeling I get all of the time even before your picture, before your lies could drop down, down, down That's what brings me around, round, round And I feel like I see you someday Like I know the sun will rise and I know the sky will take And I know I'm on your heart and I know that weight will break you down That's what brings me around Cause baby I can feel you closer, closer than you are You're with her when you're with her yeah so far when you miss me baby ooh, ooh. are you with me baby ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh. i feel really bad for stealing you like i have it's the same feeling i get but before I go to bed, no, I feel really bad for stealing you like I have. Uh, it's the same feeling I get before I start to see what I can feel. Yeah. Oh, darling, I can feel. Yeah. Oh, baby, I can feel. 
yeah When you're with me, baby, I can feel, yeah When you're thinking about me, baby, I can feel, yeah Closer, closer than you are You're with her when you're with her Yeah, so far when you miss me Thank you. I'm going to grab some water real fast. Thank you. All right. I'm going to take out the rest of the set. All right. Um, this next one is called Envy. Fickle winds blow my thoughts around in my head Moving so high Oh, I see the leaves growing on the trees And I see all the green But darling, I feel a different kind Oh, I feel envy Envy for what you have If I could have anything I would just want you back Oh, I feel envy Envy for how your heart unpacks And for who gets to hold all of that Oh, golden eyelids I've got heavy dreams and I'm wondering if you remember me like I do you, like I do you. Oh, all I want since you left was for you to come back. Now here I am, bathed all in green. And I feel envy, envy for what you have. If I could have anything, I would just want you back Oh, I feel envy Envy for how your heart unpacks And for who gets to hold all of that Thank you Um, this next one is called Midnight in Paris. It's your classic love song. Hold on, I'm gonna try and get my hair out of my face so I'm not singing with hair in my mouth. There we go. I get lost at night Seems I'm always fighting Fighting for my rights to you I get lost on moonstruck streets Where I dream of you and me Oh, I, I can never find my way back home It's like midnight in Paris Oh, that's where you found me That's where we, we It's like blue days underwater Walking the rainstorms out of cover That's where we, we That's where we find our Clear skies aren't my favorite If there's clouds, I know we'll make it Cause there'll be hellos and goodbyes Passing by 
When I try to forsake this And I try my best to break it I will look for omens in your smiling eyes It's like midnight in Perry Oh, that's where you found me That's where we It's like blue days underwater, walking the rainstorms out of cover. That's where we, we, that's where we find our love, love. I got the time. Oh, give me all your loving time. Give me all the love that's mine. Give me all your love. I got the time. Oh, it's like midnight in Perry. Oh, that's where you found me. That's where we. It's like blue days underwater, walking the rainstorms out of cover. That's where we are. We find our love. 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 Thank you. with clouds. Um, it was sunny before, but they've come out. I'm appreciative of it. Um, this next one is called, Have You Ever Seen? Have you ever seen the way the light reflects off the trees? Have you ever seen the way it likes to hit me? Have you ever wondered what it like to be so near? Look into my eyes and know I had no fear Have you ever seen the way the ocean breaks up When I started singing, no, you can't make this up Have you ever seen the way I've seen you look at me Oh, you try to hide it, but I see, oh, darling One day it'll be enough, oh, darling I pray it'll be enough and I hope That this works out, uh, you're so fine Maybe you'll be mine. Uh. Oh, 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 Have you ever seen the way I like to take it all back? Oh, when the suns are setting, it's a solemn fact. Have you ever seen my eyes when they like to get wise? I immediately try to find a way out. I I don't know what it is or what you do to me Maybe it's cause you come from my heart Baby, now I see Oh, I don't like people getting too close to me No, no, I don't like people getting too close to me But darling, one day it'll be enough Oh, darling, I pray it'll be enough And I hope that this works out Oh, you're so fine Maybe you'll be mine Seen the way I like to take it all back Oh, when the sun's are setting It's a solemn fact Have you ever seen my eyes When they like to give eyes I immediately dry Oh, darling One day it'll be enough Oh, darling I pray it'll be enough And I hope That this works out Oh, you're so fine Maybe you'll be mine Thank you. Thank you. Um, this next one is called Women. And it's about just the beauty and the strength of women and body positivity and self-love and all that good stuff.
She's got a form like soft candy in June And I've got it bad for you Oh, I've got it bad, but what do you do with that? She's got a form like nothing I've ever seen She's doing a number on me And he just can't compete Have you ever lined the curves, the soft edges Of all we give and all we give I want you to appreciate my body My body have you ever laid your fingers on your hip dip so i give i want you to appreciate my body my body Sometimes it's hard to say out loud Feels like I'm eons away somehow But it's where I go to give you grace And where I start to think, oh You're rough and you're tough and you're what You're what I thought I wanted But you break me down and all I get Is something less than glorious You're rough and you're tough and you're what You're what I thought I wanted but you break me down And all I get is this hate that you left And I don't want it Have you ever lined the curves, the soft edges Of all we give and all we give all I want you to appreciate my body oh my body have you ever laid your fingers on these hip dips all i give i want you to appreciate my body my body mm -hmm. my body my body mm -hmm. my body my body Thank you. Um, got one more song for you guys. This last one is called uh, Don't Want Me. We're having some fun back there. <laughs> Your vibe is so immaculate, so I'm working in all the ways I knew you. And you are so immaculate when the sun hits, or oh, the sun it hits you. You become so golden, golden, like stardust, baby. I am so over it. I'm over all the ways I'm feeling for you Yeah, you, oh you But you want me, baby, you do Yeah, you, oh you But you want me how you want me, and you know That you want me when you want me, and you know That you want me how you want me to be Cause you want me, but you don't want me Could lay this all out, but I'm counting down the minutes till you leave. And I try to collect myself before the come down and all you're bringing in. You have simply worn me out, you've worn me down with the lies you've been singing. And I don't want to let you down, but you call me out only when you're thinking about you. Yeah, you, oh, you, but you want me. Baby, you do Yeah, you Oh, you But you want me how you want me And you know That you want me when you want me And you know That you want me how you want me to be Cause you want me but you don't want me Could be anybody You get lonely When the sun goes down had me in the first half but i've been had and i'm tired of trying to be like you 
You, oh you, oh you, yeah you, oh you, but you want me, baby you do, yeah you, oh you, cause you want me how you want me and you know, that you want me when you want me and you know, that you want me how you want me to be. Cause you want me but you don't want me No you don't want me Thank you Thank you um, So that's my set for tonight uh, I cannot wait to listen um, to your beautiful poetry um, And thank you so much again so, uh, two quick thank yous that I didn't make earlier. I need to thank Jim Marshall, who's, who's videoing for us. Um, my students, um, I, I know you're probably ready to scoot. After Rhonda reads, I need you to stay to please, um, if you could sign a waiver for us. Jim does an amazing job filming for us. He's been volunteering us for, I don't know, more than 20 years, Jim? Yeah. Right from the start. So he shows up every time and he makes these amazing films that um, you can access on the Arts Cafe Mystic website. So it usually takes the, um, the folks at the Groton uh, Public Library and their video crew who are also great friends to the Arts Cafe Mystic in about a month, this new, um, um, event will be up and running for you. So thank you so much, Jim. And Jason, thank you so much for doing the sound for us. Again, my board members, for those of you um, who came in early or maybe we didn't have them yet, we do have parking vouchers. So we have small pieces of paper that you can get um, by the door on your way out if you didn't get one. And you just give those to the parking attendant on the way out. Um, it's a real thrill and honor to introduce you to Rhonda Ward, who is a force of nature as we celebrate the natural world and green poetry. I met Rhonda as a friend years ago and a fellow poet, and we've, we've shared some meals and some stories. Rhonda's been really, really hard at work as the Poet Laureate of New, of New London for the last five years. She just relinquished that post. Um, she's worked um, avidly with, with young people and was a founding member of Writer's Block, Inc. And she's also on the board of directors for Soul Mountain. Most recently, Rhonda's been involved in the creation of a mixed mixed media presentation that she, that's mentioned in her bio. It's called Three Steps Forward and Two Steps Back. And it's a profound look at systematic racism. And it involves visual art and music and spoken word. And we are on the list to have that presentation brought here to us at the Mystic Museum of Art. So they got it off the ground in Florida, but I've already, um, I've already nosed in there, so when they're ready to present in southeastern Connecticut, we'll hear from them. I didn't realize until today that Rhonda Ward doesn't have a book. I figured she had four or five, so I've got a new mission, which is to make sure that she has her own publication. She's been published in numerous anthologies, including Margaret Gibson's Waking Up to the Earth, which we'll celebrate in a month. Um, She's been, she's been online, and it's time for a book, kiddo. Let's please welcome Rhonda Ward to our stage. Maybe for the fourth time. You've been here before, Rhonda. To our Student Poets Laureate, I cannot thank you guys enough for an amazing workshop, for your stellar presentations today, Lisa mentioned that you guys were nervous. I don't think anybody would have noticed that today. You guys were amazing. Uh, thank you for your, yes, 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 yes. Thank you for your interest in and your dedication to poetry. And as I've said to you all, all day long today, you're amazing, but keep poetry in your lives. Um, it has been a, pleasure for me to be a part of this amazing anthology that our uh, fabulous poet laureate Margaret Gibson for the state of Connecticut 
has brought together poets from all over Connecticut. And uh, later in my reading, I'll read a few poems from this and um, I would encourage you to get this book when you can. Um, it's important. It's an important subject, not just for talking, but for action. We need to start doing something about the air we breathe and the water we drink. And so um, I didn't think that I was much of a natural poet, but I started gathering poems for today, and I found that I have actually written about nature. So <laughs> here we go. This first poem, uh, I think uh, everywhere I went, there was a woman who would request this poem, so I stopped doing it for years. It was one of my favorites. It's called While Gazing at a Painting of Tie-Dyed Butterflies. While gazing at a painting of tie-dyed butterflies with aquamarine and turquoise wings over a backdrop of gold leaf sunshine, I am reminded of the time I faced the praying mantis rubbing his greedy hands together as I bent over to tie my shoes paralyzed by the rhythm of his prayer. In my mind, he was giving thanks for what he was about to receive. Before the praying mantis, I caught butterflies and bees in jars with holes hammered into the lids, was unafraid to step up to the bright purple flowers in our backyard and hover over a fuzzy yellow jacket poised, jar in one hand, lid in the other, waiting for him to light on the sweet stamen. But the praying mantis was alien with his bulging eyes, triangular head, and stoic stick figure. I almost believed he would have me for his meal, then remembered my shoes were made for running. After the praying mantis, I gave up catching butterflies and bees, throwing rocks, and walking the trusses of the train, track, train tracks with my brothers. That was the year my mother made me take ballet. Okay, so um, um, I went to Greece, beautiful, beautiful country. I went to Greece several years ago, met a poet by the name of George Wallace. Uh, not that George Wallace is always what I follow his, <laughs> his an introduction uh, about him or anything I have to say about him. But he's a wanderer. And he sent me a poem one day. At the t in the year I met him, he was writing a poem a day. He sent me this poem called A Woman of Virtue. And I just had to respond. The poem was written so beautifully. Um, so this is my response to him. This is called A Man of Wisdom. A man of wisdom is a mountain sweating its cap down to nothing. The arid plains of the Serengeti sun-baked grasses, the baobab tree, paw prints of lions, claws, re claws retracted, the collective of every spot on every spotted animal everywhere. A man of wisdom stands like the Tower of Italy, leaning but never falling. When he speaks, a sunray is breaking out of a cloud. His voice is church bells ringing on the hour. A man of wisdom does not fear the space between breaths, the space between words, the space between a glance and tumbling down a hill of infatuation. Knees and elbows curled into stomach, rolling, rolling, rolling. A man of wisdom walks with a bird of happiness cupped into his hand, peeking into the darkness of his hand nest, holding it to his ear to listen to the chirp of glad tidings. 
burying his, I'm sorry, burying his teeth into a smile, laughing the good news into the wind. A man of wisdom does not, a man of wisdom emits a fragrant odor when he parts his lips to speak. The scent of sandalwood is on his tongue. His teeth are poetry. His words a fine cognac stinging my ears with their truth. Um, next, thank you, thank you. The next few poems are uh, from my time in Bulgaria. I uh, was there in 2015 as part of an exchange. Uh, I had a month long residency and prior to that trip, I'd been in about a five year writer's block. So, um, I was not feeling very confident as a poet at all. Um, we got to uh, London. I stayed with some friends. We got to Sofia, the capital of Bulgaria. I met up with some young poets that I had met over here in New London. And then we went into the Rodope Mountains and suddenly my muse woke up and it was a beautiful experience. So these are very observatory poems about this time in um, Bulgaria. Sunday in Pokovnik Serafimovo. The day breaks brisk on Sunday. In the distance, the sounds of sheep baaing and birds. Only the innocent stir at this hour. The cat that belongs to the house is off wherever he sleeps. Dogs sing across the sweeping hills in the way they do, one responding to another. Their call, as their call circle round and back again. The village, bustling on any other day, observes the Sabbath. A crow calls, starlings flit about, and the sun is ascending a cloudless sky. <laughs> this sky is not cloudless. Uh, what are we doing here? Um, hmm. I still believe the bread truck would come, and uh, this uh, poem is called The Market Comes to the Village. The village women sit on a bench on the side of a narrow road wearing colorful clothing. Lenka wears a purple blouse, Rusa a skirt of many colors. Ivanka is clad in a light coat and hat this hot day, and Tiny Maria is dressed in black from top to bottom. They speak with their mouths and hands, leaning forward to face those who they address. Maybe they are discussing the finer details of cooking fresh killed lamb, what herbs to use, what spices, whether to rub or marinate, or perhaps they are all wondering aloud why the green grocer is late today. The market comes to the village three times each week, bread on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, fruits and vegetables Monday and Friday only. They arrive in old vans chock full of food, Driving down the narrow road, they pass the square, continue to the turnaround point, then return. The women rush to the van, buying five or six loaves apiece, stuffing their purchases into bags they have stuffed into their pockets. Fruits and vegetables come two hours later by the same route, passing the square, turning back, the driver has a partner who sits in back, weighs food, collects payments, makes change. There are peppers and cucumbers, onions and melons, tomatoes, eggplant, peaches, apricots. Potatoes too, though there need not be. These women grow their own. 
They examined everything with experienced eyes and fingers. Having picked and paid, the ladies scatter off home. In two days' time, this ritual will begin again. Um, next couple of poems have to do with thank you. <laughs> next couple of poems, few poems have to do with the water and Um, I want to start with this excerpt uh, from the Wasteland, TSL. And this is uh, an excerpt from What the Thunder Said. Here is no rock. Here, I'm sorry, is no water, but only rock. Rock and no water. And the sandy road. The road winding above, among the mountains where which are mountains of rock without water. If there were water, we should stop and drink. Amongst the rocks, one cannot stop and think. Sweat is dry and feet are in the sand. If there were only water amongst the rock, dead mountain mouth of carious teeth that cannot spit, here, one can neither stand nor lie nor sit. There is not even silence in the mountains, but dry, sterile, thunder without rain. There is not even solitude in the mountains, but red, sullen faces sneer and snarl from doors of mud-cracked houses if there were water and no rock. If there were rock, and also water, and water, and spring, a pool among the rock. If there were the sound of water only, not the cicada and dry grass singing, but sound of water over rock, where the hermit thrush sings in the pine tree, drip, drop, drip, drop, 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 drop. But there is no water. This poem is called Measure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure he appreciates your applause. <laughs> Measure. We drink our filth, and full are still not satiated. Have spilled the cup, have wasted priceless drops, have lulled the ebb the flow, the fluid indignation of man's greed cannot be, be measured. Indeed, our plight is strictly human. What other of God's creatures treats the earth with such disdain? So wretchedly, we disregard the main source of our being. It measures fully in us because we're made of it. That easy, grace filled, rhythmic small, rhythmic flow, so natural, so requisite, so vast in measure, yet so limited. Next poem. <laughs> now, I don't know if some of you know, I used to work at this place, at the Mr. Garza, and um, uh, I used to get the coffee at uh, the Green Marble over here, and one day I'm walking back from getting that coffee, and there is just a puff of red leaves on the ground on a fall day, and um, this poem just uh, came to me, so. This is called Red. I walked past Red this morning, fresh fallen beneath the tree, its softness blanketing a patch of pavement still moist from last night's rain. That Red lay there competing against a clear blue Indian summer sky. A sun so bright, I had to squint my eyes behind my shades. 
That red just lay there in a heap of leaves, tugging my gaze away from every other beautiful thing in sight. The river coursing on its way to where it goes before returning with the tide. All the yellow and the green still holding on to hope. Um, not really, I've never really written a lot of my poem, but one day, on a day kind of similar to this, it started off quite sunny and gorgeous, turned into a cloudy day that rained, and as the day, uh, as the morning, passed along, I, uh, I began to write this, this little haiku series. It's called Haiku Morning. Wispy clouds drifting across the lazy sky, my mind wanders with you. Cirrus clouds stretch like opalescent blankets, blankets flung to the stratosphere. Dizzy sheets of white, smoky, thick, rippled, broken, march toward the things. Sugar dumpling clowns, you look good enough to eat, and I can reach you. Phosphorescent leaves turn their silver backs to me. Rain is coming soon. <laughs> And uh, this next poem is the poem from the anthology. Thank you. This is the poem from the anthology. This poem, um, we, we talked quite a bit about social justice in our workshop today. And um, this poem is about nature in a uh, sideways kind of way. So in urban spaces, there are not a lot of green spaces. And this poem, uh, in, uh, in some way, addresses that. Uh, this is, I'm sorry, urban aesthetic. I ain't got no garden. All I got is this stretch of dirt in my shortcut. A few weeds peeking up in cross-eyed patches, looking like they want to be cabbage or green. Ain't no mountains in the ghetto. I do have a purple dress, though, that I look majestic in, if I do say so myself. <laughs> rolling plains and fields, forget it. Only things rolling around here is them pieces of candy wrapping and cigarette butts moving along on a whim of the wind on their way to the gutter. But beauty ain't lost. On ghetto coke. We thought it was a foreign language we speak in English. We got hair, natural, fried, and curly. We got soul food and double dutch and purple. <laughs> This was uh, this poem was also written in Greece. Uh, I went there to um, to learn to write a little more. After that. Uh, most of my poems have been so rooted in reality, and I've heard I've heard so many beautiful poems that took chances and risks. And um, I went there to meet uh, George Wallace and um, came away with some some insights. This is called a single table. What can a single table do against the roundness of the earth? Besides being respite for tired elbows or rest for a plate hot from its own task. If it is blue, it can be a lake for a puddle of moisture sweated from a glass of ice or depending on its shape and size, guide the blonde straight around its edges. A table, 
can stand firm on all its legs, giving in to gravity or bring together a family clasping hands.
So we sat forth over fields simplified by snow and ice, bent low to negotiate an avenue of wild rose arched by weight of winter, its red hips ripe, past a stand of cattails, umber sea tubes, broken into beige wool redolent as spice, and came to an endless lake, steel blue under a lowering anthracite sky, ornamented by salmon trim at its distant edge. Along the shore, past bare willows, growing from a, glowing from within, a serration of waves broke, all but frozen with the rock-ridden jet of a long spit hung teeth of ice, a place as austere as the cold cattle shed and tooth-gnawed slats of a small corn crib we hollowed as a manger that night. Nursery of God, here now at the heart of wilderness was the mystery we've come far to see, at first nothing, a white-topped, white and gray-striped boulder at the far end of the promontory, then the white top of the boulder moved, swiveled like a lighthouse illuminating a circle of the world, searching into us, the oval, gold-eyed face of the snowy owl. From the Arctic tundra, a creature so fiercely itself, it was the proof I was looking for. Um, I will say thank you. Uh, I'm sure I'm ready to go. I'm going to try one more, and, and I'm going to let you guys like, sit or like, um, But, um, um, Jose B. Gonzalez is, um, he teaches English at the Coast Guard Academy. He's a Brown graduate. He is a, um, he is a immigrant. And I love this poem that he wrote for this, uh, for this anthology. It's called, And Then I Read It by Jose B. Gonzalez. Another confession. Before she left her, I never asked her to teach me about her. So I read books about planting, and I learned about water, and how much was too little, and how much could kill the roots. And I understood why she left El Salvador's earthquakes. And then I started to read books about soil, and how crops should be moved, and I understood why she had no choice but to move Yanni and I, uh, Yanni and me, and then I read books about landslides. And I understood why she brought her mother and her sister to live with us. And then I read about de deforestation, and how only eating was worse than our old countries. And then I remembered how they said that we, that she looked toward the sky when she took the last breath. And then I looked at the trees and I saw what her eyes saw. I saw what her eyes had dreamed. That's I am so sorry for the weather. Uh, can't do anything <laughs> How am I doing on time? Should I? I think, I think maybe one or two more. Because we're going to hear a lot. Yeah, we're going to. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let me continue. I'm just going to wing it because I, I'm, I'm always doing the tech thing. Uh, 
Well, it's, I think this poem is speak for itself. Uh, it's called Bittersweet to Know. Um, the magnolia is the state flower and state tree of Mississippi. The magnolia state. Bittersweet. Your pristine petals bore a, a blood street legacy. Your fragrance collided with the stench of decomposition. Your branches became swings for noose looped ropes. Your fruit was dark and bruised and bitter. Your roots absorbed generations. Your bark scratched against the wounds of a nation for a long division.